Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. But you already know that because that's why you've tuned in. Today, we're joined by Michael from London. He's making his second appearance, is it, Michael? Second appearance. It is, Russ. Oh, yeah. How are you doing? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm great. Thanks, mate. I'm fine. What have you been up to? I've uh, been working. Um, I've done some training with the British Powers as well, so everything's going well. Yeah, I saw the photograph of you uh, in all uh, army gear, thinking you're John Rambo. I'm trying. <laughs> hey. uh, how old are you, Michael? 30 years old now. 30 now, yeah? Yeah. A bit late to be going in army, 30, isn't it? Yeah, probably is, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, then, moving on from the private Benjamin. <laughs> we'll talk about uh, boxing, because that's what we're here to talk about. Because uh, I don't want you going in army and then running about telling everybody that you're a boxer, like Ross the Boss Birkinshaw, because that's what he did. He went in army as a rifleman and came out telling everybody he's a boxer. <laughs> and it best in army. There were only him who were boxing in division. <laughs> no, no, no competition isn't that, then. Isn't that right, Ross? Hey, I'm Dennis. I just got out of army. I'm a boxer now, you know. Right then, uh, moving on. Uh, did you watch the Panorama documentary the other night? And if you did, what did you think about it, Michael? Go on, you've got the floor. Yeah, sure. Um, of course I watched it. Um, but you know, I learned nothing new really, so you know, I'll to look at it from both points of view. As far as I'm aware, Daniel Kinahan has never actually been charged with anything, so I don't really know what to say. I mean, if you're saying he's guilty, they should charge him. If not, it's, it's getting a little boring now, to be honest. But you know, if the man's never been charged, you know, I, you know, I don't know what to say, but you know. Have you ever been in trouble, Michael? Uh, no, unfortunately, never, never even had the police caution. So, if the same thing were being said about you, that you were this big, heavy mobster running guns and having people shot dead and drugs and money laundering and all that, would you be very unhappy? Because I know I would. No, of course you, because but that's what I'm trying to get. At. I mean, mud sticks. So I, I don't know if he's guilty or not. Now, if it, for argument's sake, if he's done nothing wrong, for yeah. argument's sake, you're, like, you're destroying the guy's life. So either charge him or just, I'm getting bored of it, really. But I'd, I'd be upset if it was me. You, you know, you'd take legal action, wouldn't you? The other, the other side to the coin is, why doesn't he fly back to Ireland and meet with these people that are saying he's done all these terrible crimes? Oh, that's an excellent point. That's an excellent point. Um... Well, all right. I think he said once or twice, they've said um, uh, his lot, they've said uh, he's, he's being set up. So if you're being set up, then obviously you're not really going to go back. But I mean, if it was me, I mean, you know, you'd want to clear it up if you're innocent. But it's not really a lot for us to say. You know, we're not the law. When not, not that I'm ducking the question, I'm not scared to talk about him. But either, either charge him or, you know what I mean, leave the guy alone. I saw that uh, programme, which I've got a uh, boxer. Well, I used to have Sweeney boxer, and I get it McWhale. And in one of Sweeney programmes, there's this armed robber called Johnny Lyons. He's like a big, heavy London villain. This is in the 70s, you know, when they used to drive Daimler Jags and stuff like that. Proper yeah. men in them days, proper armed blaggers. And uh, I remember him saying to Regan, he said, you're trying to fit me up. <laughs> <laughs> so, but... I don't know what to make of it all. A lot of people have basically filled the nappies. They don't want to come out and say anything because they're frightened to death. And I can understand that. But I'm not taking sides from anybody. I'm just here to, to narrate a story on what we've, what we've heard because I've only heard what you people have heard. And, you, and I'm putting myself in Daniel Kinnehan's position, right? No criminal record. Businessman is in another country and they're going after him. Now, either charge him or extradite him or do something, but 
don't come at me with stuff that we already know anyway. It's just that because it's on Panorama, it's a bit more serious. Yeah. I, I don't know what to make of it all, but if he does get charged and found guilty, everything around him will all it'll all collapse, but it doesn't look like that's happening, does it? So why don't these people move on? I mean, look, I'm not taking sides from, from anybody. All I know is MTK, they pay the fighters on time, don't they? But we have to look at evidence and go by the letter of the law. And speaking as, well, I, I, I'm not ashamed to admit to it. Well, I am maybe a little bit now, but I used to be a career criminal and I've had okay. many run-ins. I've had not guilties when I thought I were a bit lucky to get not guilties. And I've had guilties, as you know, because you've, you've seen picture frames, uh, uh, newspaper clippings in my house, haven't you? And yeah. I've had guilties when I thought, hang on a minute. I'm innocent here and I've proved that and I've been sent to prison and I've been let out of prison. Uh, I got judging chambers uh, two weeks into a sentence. And so I know what it's like to be accused of something you haven't done. I also know what it's like to just go no comment and hope, hope for the best and have a bit of luck. But this this guy, right, he's a bit younger than me, was he 43, 42? He's not got a criminal record and we've got all that. I, this is unprecedented, this. I thought they were going to come at us with some hard evidence, but it reminded me of the Sam Allardyce thing, the, the son of Sam. You remember him? Because we all know Sam Allardyce has had about 13... He's been a manager 13 times and he's never won a trophy yet, but he's had all these payouts, a bit like Mark Hughes and people like that. It's the same old merry-go-round, isn't it? But did Panorama do something with uh, Sam Allardyce and... Years before Terry Venables, but none of them were ever found guilty or anything. So, if these people have hunches, do they just put it out there? I mean, are we to believe Barry McGuigan's story? I don't know, but he's saying that this Daniel Kinnan's a bad guy and all that. But let me tell you something, right? Go on. Rumor is a pipe blown by surmises, jealousies, and conjectures. People are either surmising. The jealous to death or the conjecture rubbish. And they're giving a man a reputation that might not be true. Now, we, we all know what social media can do and things like that. For example, I have emails every day of people telling me, John Fury is this big roadman killer, that he's an ice man and this and that. Nobody has ever seen John Fury have a fight who's commenting. They're all going on hearsay. What yeah. they don't know, they're making up the... It's like I just said, that I was surmising the jealous or the conjecting rubbish. Somebody just sent me something today. John Fury uh, is about, we're about to die, and he told Grim Reaper that he ain't going to die or something. Or something like that, or he delivered himself when he was born. Look, rubbish. Stop creating reputations out of nothing. None of them have seen him fight. And nobody, it seems, the police, the media, have seen this guy kill anyone, sell drugs, launder money, or or to hit some people or whatever. So I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I can understand people who are signed to MTK wanting to come out and go out to bat for him. But listen, there's an old saying that Barry Earn once told a good friend of mine, when anything like this, when the shit hits the fan, silence is the best thing to go. Silence is golden, isn't it? You know that song, don't you? Silence heard, of course, yeah. is golden, right. Coogan's not coming out and saying now. Eddie Hearn, all of them are not going to come and say they're not they're not giving it airtime. Look at the YouTube channels. Hatman Strikes Back, Sporting Icons, their matchroom propaganda. IFL, matchroom propaganda. Boxing Social, they're supposed to be the hardcore's hardcore, aren't they? They've not said a word. They've done a 40-minute interview with Dave Colwell talking about Opie Price. Coogan's put some out with Ray Winston. That's it. There's other YouTube channels, Behind the Gloves and Seconds Out, Fight Eye, Matchroom Boxing, BT Sport Boxing. Look, none of them want to give it airtime. Do you know why? Because they're shit in the pants. They don't want to burn bridges. Yeah. I'm giving it airtime as a neutral. I'm not siding with anybody. If he's done everything that he's done, go lock him up. And then we can, then we can have a proper opinion. But until I see some arrests and some trials and some convictions... You're miles from it. I mean, something like this could be five years to get him into court. So there's no arrests, right? 
Yeah. No convictions. They've got to arrest him first. Then they're going to need evidence. Then they're going to need convictions. And then, and then we'll, what, what's he going to get then? I mean, he's got. He's never been in trouble in his life. So yeah, his dad has, but he hasn't. So maybe it might be harsh. I'm not taking sides with anybody. We've got to go on the letter of the law. There might be some people in my watch who go, "Bucky, you've got to hammer him." Look, I'll hammer him if he gets a guilty. But you're way off that now. We're, we're way off it. And while yeah. ever the paying fighters and promoters and commissions, border control and all the four belts, WBC, WBA, IBF, IBO, WBO, all the five belts, EBU, whatever, they're paying everybody and doing it correctly. Where's the problem? No convictions, no evidence, no arrests. So all these people who are saying, I've got to hammer him, look, if he's a bit if he's so well, we've all had his moments, but he yeah. ain't got no convictions. <laughs> I, I've got loads, but he ain't got any. So if that were my dad, my dad's got no convictions, right? My dad would be fuming. He'd be like, I'm getting all this grief because of you. And he's put Daniel's probably getting it because of his old man. I don't know. But if I were him, I'd go back to Ireland and say, What, what do you want to talk to me about? That's what I'd do. Or it's up to them to take him back. But should he have to go back? I don't know, but it, it's got boring, and, and this is how I look at it, right? We oh, all yeah. need to move on from it now. We all need to move on from it. That's just what I think, anyway. I don't know, what do you think? As you've, you've summed it up. Um, I'm not scared to talk about it. I, I, I give an objective analysis, but there's no, as I say, there's nothing to talk about. He's never been charged, so... You know, it's it's up to the police. Like I wish everyone in this involved well. I wish Daniel well. I wish the police well. I wish Ireland well. I wish everyone. But I'm I'm not the police. I, I can't. If he's done something, let them charge. Let them arrest him and charge him. But I can't sit here. I, I, I'll give you a quick example. I've I've broken up fights before. You know, I once broke up a fight between two people I didn't know. So literally, I've jumped in the middle of them. I've I've stopped it. But I, I don't know what's happened. So like the, the fight was getting a bit out of hand. And I'm not exaggerating, but I broke it up. Now, because, because you know, like both of them were actually my friends, I, I'm not going to help either person. I've got no reason to take sides. I just look, leave it, guys. Just leave it now. And, you know, they, they left it. But this is what I'm trying to say with this. Like I can't, there's no reason for me to take sides. If he's guilty, arrest him. If he's not, there's nothing I can really say. I've I've got no horse horse in the race. But I, I just it's getting boring. I just hope someone I just hope they sort it out either way. But you know, there's no there's nothing I can say. I, I can't yeah. you know. I haven't got the authority, I haven't got the legal power to do anything. Yeah. There's a lot of people dining at the trough though, isn't there, in boxing at the moment. Hence the expression as greedy, greedy. as a pig. Yeah. No, but you know, there's a lot of so, look, yeah. this is how I look at it, right? Let's right. just let's just move on from it, mate. Let's just move on from it and let everybody just get on with the boxing because it's not doing anybody good any good, I don't think. And I can see some people getting sued. It listen, if that were me, I'd want to sue them, mate. That, so that would I. Sue them. Before so I, would I, I yeah. before, when I were 15, before I got into trouble. If anybody said it about me, I said, here, yeah, don't accuse me. I've never been in trouble in my life. Obviously, I can't say that now, but I just think it would it would be in a bit of bad taste. I thought they were going to have a photographic evidence of all sorts and people coming out saying he did this and did that. Nobody came out. Nobody grasped him up. And all we had all we had were Byron McGuigan saying, oh, yeah, uh, I've heard he's, heard he's done this and done that. that. That's not good enough for a charge. That's hearsay. No, that's hearsay, yeah. It's circum, circumstantial. Circumstantial. So that's, It's neither here nor there. Yeah. So it's one of them things, isn't it? It's one of them things. But, uh, so, all right then. Moving on. What did you think about Gary Russell Jr. knocking back a million dollars to fight Josh Warrington? I, I, so I, I've got, I'm shocked. I don't know what to say. Like Gary Russell, he fights once a year anyway, or once every 10 years. Well, 
there's been a few of them recently. Um, Keith Furman knocked back, I think it was like, what, 600 grand to fight Terence Crawford. All right, I'll give you a quick, it's like, if I'm at work, if I don't like the job, you should at least negotiate in private. You shouldn't be airing this sort of business publicly. But I, I just, I wish Gary Russell well, but I hope one day you don't look back on this, on this moment and, and live to regret that. Because a million pounds is a million pounds. I mean, you've got people working on construction sites and Tesco's and for £10 an hour. Or you've got these kids working in these factories in uh, some of these Asian countries for a lot less than that. You know, Africa. I, I know people in Africa. Like I've, I've been to East Africa. Some of these people live on $5 a day, if that. And you've knocked a million pounds back to do your job. This is something you've been boxing for however long you know, you're the best in the world, according to you, and you knock the money back. All right, mate, it's your, it's your money. Well, well not anymore. But I, I, I don't get the logic. I, I don't, uh, you know, I'm, I'm shocked. Like, a lot of these fighters these days, to not even talk about it, wow. I, like, if Dennis Hobson was to offer me a job, or if, if Al Heyman said to me, I want you to come work for PBC, even if I don't, it's like the least I would do, I'll come to your office and talk to you in private. And if I don't like the offer, I'll keep it private. I'm not going to start coming out publicly and insulting people. You know, I, I just don't understand the rationale. If Dennis offers you a job, you'd be over at Monwick package that he'd give you. <laughs> Probably would, yeah. yeah. Ticket deal, mate. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I remember my friend Ingram Jones, obviously, you know, he used to work for Dennis and, you know, for however long. It was me, I gave, I gave it job. I know, you're the one that hooked up for him. But, but that's what I'm saying. If someone offers you a work opportunity, and this is, this is weird, because you keep seeing this in boxing. Fighters get offered a fight and they start attacking the promoter publicly. If you don't like it, you should have the conversation behind closed doors. But listen, it's, it's your life. You know, you're going to knock a million pounds back. I mean, all right, but if you ever go broke, remember what you could have had. You know, you're not going to get that same offer twice. I knocked and that job back because I said, I know this is a bit rich for me coming now after 1,260 videos, but go on. I said, I don't think I could do it. Oh, you could, you could. I said, no. In fact, it was AJ Hobson that says to me, you could do it. You need to come out of your comfort zone. I said, no, I don't think I can do it, but I know somebody, Ingram, he'll, he can do it. And then, obviously, Ingram did, uh, did about three or four shows, and then I did it, but I did it for free. In Ingram didn't do it for free. He got paid. He got flown over, put in an hotel, picked up and dropped off from airport and that. So he was happy in that, but I, I think he's probably a, a, a better interviewer than me because I, I, I just cut straight to straight to nitty gritty don't I? I don't want to sit there chewing fat it's like yeah. when you you've just come on now I've just gone straight in at you with this mtk thing and because it's our story it is that nobody wants to talk about you spoke about it and i've got somebody coming on tonight so that'll be second person but other than that there's only me that's really spoke about it isn't there really nobody's saying a word we're not talking out of, out of line or anything listen so he's resting if they arrest him and he gets found guilty we can all have a say then. But there's that many people dependent on this man. He, he, he must be... He must have a lot of pressure on him. And you've got an old country after him, hasn't he? It's, uh, but, it's a lot of pressure, yeah. But till the game see it shows some evidence, we can't, we can't say out. But like I said, I like to get to nitty-gritty. And, uh, and I think all these YouTubers now, I think they've all shown the true colours now because... They've all shit the pants, haven't they? They don't say anything. They don't even talk about it. But obviously, you can't. I can't hammer the poor, the poor guy because he's not got no conviction and not been arrested. So you can't. I do know the letter of the law, but none of them even want to give it airtime because maybe they've been told. I don't know. But who cares anyway? As long as fights get made, I'm not really bothered. Yeah. Obviously, we don't know what's going on in Ireland and all that, do we? So. People might want to have a pop at me in the comments section. Bring it on. They're doing my job for me once they're, once they're hammering me. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to do That's what I'm here to do, be controversial. People need to understand that. I'm going to say the things that people say 
and they're not going to come out and say it. That's what I do. That's how. That's what we've built here. This is what we've built up here. And there's a lot of people happy with what we're doing. So I'm all right. But it's a massive, massive story, and the silence is deafening, isn't it? Where's Tyson Fury's statement? Like he's in hiding. <laughs> Where's his statement? He was shouting off about. Thank you, Daniel Kinahan, damn the man for making the fight. Now, silence. A bit like John Fury with £100,000 bare knuckle fight. John, still got your award money here. Still here, John. Five grand. John Fury said he had a fight with somebody for 100 grand. I've challenged him on my channel to give me a name or for some of his people to give me a name. Let's have the man's name. Didn't happen, yeah, wouldn't happen, never happened. I think John Fury, the whole thing is all talk. I mean, Mickey Fury offered him out. He doesn't want to do it, you know. He, he, I mean, the whole thing's a myth because John Fury, you know, you've been around boxing all these years. Where are your fights? Show me some videos, you know. But he's, he doesn't want to fight for you, you know. Well, but remember, it's, it's easier to talk. Who was it? Was, it was Mike Tyson who said this. Everyone's got a plan until they get hit in the mouth. So, you know, it's like, what's, what's his name? One of the best fighters in boxing history, Eddie Hills, you know, pound for pound. But it's, look, it's all well and good talking, but you know this, anybody can talk. I'll do this, I'll do that. But once someone punches you in the face, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what you're about. You know, we'll, we'll see if you really... All, all John Fury is coming out with is utter rubbish. That's all it is, mate. It's just utter... I wish him well, but you know, you know, Mickey Fio offered you out. You don't want to do it. That's that. You know, so yeah. Well, you you you've you know, so you, you you haven't really backed up the things. He hasn't really backed up what he was saying. But that's you know, and I would, but there's nothing really to say, is there? You know. Well, this is how I look at it, right? Yeah. When you're running around saying that you've had hundred thousand pound bare knuckle fights and won. And there's no footage. There's nobody even coming through and saying, "Yeah, I lost under a grand to John Fury." And you, and you can't. John can't even mention a name. Do you see why I have a problem with that? Because my channel is to talk about all things related to boxing, isn't it? Make no, you you, you'd know, you'd know right, if he's actually done it, which I don't really think he has. No, he but he'd be able to give us a name. He'd be able to give us. I I I can give you. Uh, what's a good example for me? It's all right. In bo look, if you if you're gonna get involved in a fight, there's gonna be witnesses, there's gonna be film footage, you know what I mean? We know that we know that Anthony Joshua knocked out Klitschko. There's video evidence. There's but you know, if you're saying you had a hundred grand bit and where's the people? Or did you do it in your back garden or you'd have done it in front of witnesses, wouldn't you? Same thing with Eddie Hills, four and oh, Billy Rickett, super heavyweight amateur star, free by way off. Eddie Hills or Eddie Hearn. Who did Eddie fight? Who were referee? Who were Eddie Hearn's trainer? Now, he says it was Jim McDonnell. Jim McDonnell won't comment on it. Why wouldn't well, somebody who's trained a famous promoter's son, and this promoter is in all the fame, trained his son for four fights? Why can't Jim McDonnell come out and say, yeah, I trained him and he won all four free by knockout? Why can't Jim McDonnell come out and say that? Because it never happened, wouldn't happen. It'd be in the billions to one of it happening. Yeah, but with Jim McDonald, it's very easy to explain. Obviously, uh, boxing's a business. Now, he doesn't want to come out and expose Eddie Hearn because you don't want to risk losing out on opportunity. Why can't he come out then and say, yeah, uh, I did train him and, and, and uh, he, he was from a rich family, he had four wins... And he just petered out and he didn't work out for him, but he wasn't defeated. Why can't he say that? He's been, he's been told not to say anything. Instead of just cutting the story dead. You know, like, you know when you... Listen to me. Yeah, go on. No, we know about the seven million to charity that Tyson were going on about, don't we? Allegedly. I, I know why he said that. No, I can... Listen, I know why he said that, but it didn't happen, all right? They cut the story dead. That's what you do. That's what liars do. You know, when you tell a lie, you've got to tell another to keep it going. Or you cut it dead. All right? Yeah. 
John's cut it dead, the hundred grand one. We've not heard a peak out on him since I put it on him on this channel. So John Fury, I know you're watching this because you watch all my videos because all your gimp followers send you them. Apologise to me calling me a blowjob around Dennis Hobson and your brother Peter Fury and I'll call dogs off. If not, it's on you every week, John. So you apologise to me. Go on anyway, where, where, where were we at? Women's boxing. Who do you think's biggest star in women's boxing? And it's obviously Katie Taylor. Right. Is she on slide? Oh, yeah. She, she gets easier and easier to hit every fight. So you she, so you, you, you think she's on slide then, yeah? Yeah, yeah. All right, then. Should Shannon Courtney be in a world title fight next? Of course not. She hasn't fought anybody. Right. Will she be unbearable if she beats Rachel Ball and wins a world title? Yeah, she would be. Should she be brought before the Boxing Board of Control for her racist tweets? Yes. Are you only saying that because you're a black fella? No, I'm not offended. I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm thick-skinned. Um, I would say anybody that's... But I, I'll say the same thing about Anthony Joshua, huh? what he said about the, um, you know, don't boycott white people shops. I think some things you say, look, I'm not a politically correct person. I believe you're entitled to say whatever you want to say, but you have to think logically about things you say. And sometimes when you say certain things like that, you need to understand what you're saying. So what I'm saying, stand by it, stand by the things you say, own up, uh, own up to it. You know, what, what do you think of Shannon Courtney's tweets? Well, there were 2013, so... I suppose you could give her a pass then because nobody knew her then, did they? Well, it's a, it, again, it's a difficult one because then you don't want to cross the line where you're being too controlling. People are people. I mean, you know, who knows? You know, it could have been anything. Maybe she was drunk or something. Or So I'm, I'm not saying she has to be punished, but just say, oh, look, I'm a different person. I happened all those years ago. As I'm, I'm 30 years old, I'm very different from the person I was at the age of 21, 22, 24. Um, I'm, I'm different from the person I was two years ago. So, yeah, yeah I'm not saying punish her, but I just it'd be nice if she owned up and said, you know what, I'm different now and move on. Yeah, you know, she's life in it, you know. Yeah, uh, Billy Joe Saunders has allegedly said something and people are saying that it's aimed at Barry McGuigan regarding his daughter who died. Now, I've read it today in one of the newspapers. It's all over social media, in the newspapers, on websites, blah, blah, blah. Is he going to be put in front of the board or is it a misunderstanding or is he just sticking up for his mate and having a go at that woman, the, the Panorama media woman, the Irish lady? It, what what do you think? What do you think? Or oh, as well, Billy Joe Saunders as previous, basically hang him. What do you think, Michael? No, great question. Um, like the woman, her name's Nicola Talent. Well, Billy Joe Saunders, it's suspicious. Now, it it, it could be innocent or he could be guilty. So I say you, you look at his track record. So, but you got to be careful where you don't want to judge someone based on other things yeah but I'll, I'll say it's the timing the timing suspicious okay he was on instagram he's calling barry barry mcguigan a rat and then you know you just so happen to uh you know start putting up stuff about the daughter but it could be innocent you know because billy joe saunders yeah. has got a daughter but you know I think, billy yeah, joe I think saunders should... got a daughter i don't think he has he got two sons has not he what he said he's got a daughter he put oh, up a picture of know. Yeah, so I'll give you, I'll take him at his word. He said he's got a daughter. But yeah, I think Billy Joe Saunders should go before the board because, yeah, just it's, it's going a bit far with the things they're saying about Barry McGuigan. You know, if you've got an issue with Barry, you will go sort it out face to face, have a chat, but, you know, to keep insulting each other over the internet. But I, I, I wouldn't do that. You know, I don't care who you are. If I've got a problem with you, either I won't talk about you. Well, we can talk about it next time I see you face to face, but I just, I okay, don't, just talk, I don't... you're talking like you're some big road man gangster, man. What's no, 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 you know, no, no, yeah, <laughs> scaring you're... me. No, nah, I'm not scaring like me, that. Michael. But I'll tell big... you a quick, no, but truth is, though, my, my mindset towards people in boxing, 
I'd rather just keep myself to myself. I'm not interested in little squabbles and, you know what I mean? I've got other things I want to do in my life. But all this adult men going back and forth over the internet, just give each other a call, call him up on the phone and sort it out. But, you know, you shouldn't be talking about people online. Just stick to boxing. I mean, Billy Joe Saunders, you're supposed to fight Canelo in May. Look at what Canelo did to Callum Smith. If it was me, just stay in the gym, focus on your boxing. Because once you get in the ring with Canelo, it's just going to be you and Canelo. Eddie Hearn can't help you. Your trainer, I mean, Daniel Kinnahan is not going to be in the ring to help you out. You're going to have to take Canelo on. And you saw what happened to Callum Smith's arm. You know, just stick to your boxing. But that's just what I would do. You know. All right, then. Uh, I want to finish off on. Joe Joyce, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, and Alexander Usyk, that little foursome there. You think all them four don't want to fight each other? Because I think them four are the best heavyweights in the world at the moment. Um, yeah, I think they're probably the best. Personally, I don't think I don't think it's them that don't want to fight each other. Because so, uh, you've been around boxing. And, you know, you know fighters very well. A fighter just wants to fight. Because, all right, think about it. From a young age, so what is it you say to yourself? I want to become the Olympic gold medalist. And then when you become pro, I want to become, a, I want to become world champion. So let's just, all right, let's just say Amir Khan. Amir Khan is the perfect example. Whenever Amir Khan gets knocked out, you never hear him say, I got knocked out by the better fighter. He will convince himself. You remember when he fought Canelo? He said, I was winning the fight. I was winning the fight. I was, you know, if I hadn't got caught, I would have won the fight. So this is what I'm saying. Fighters will convince themselves they're the best. So I don't think Fury's scared of any of them. I don't think Joshua's scared of anyone. I think it's the teams. I think it's the Eddie Hearns and the world. It's like these people that will get in the middle and, hey, champ, champ, if you avoid the fight, give it another year, build the fight up, and the fight's going to be worth 100 minutes. So I don't think it's the fighters. Fighters just fight, don't they? Yeah, this is how I look at it, right? Yeah, go on. There's levels to it all. I spoke to Clinton Woods about this many times. Clinton would have been happy just to get an area belt, but once he got that area belt, there were no English. It was straight into the British. Once once you start picking up belts, you think, I can go to the next level, the next level. Same with Carl Froch. Once he won his British, he wanted to win it outright. And then he thought, you know, I can really do something with sport now. I'm WBC ranked number one, British outright, European guy, Sanavea, didn't want to fight him. They were going after Carl Zaghi. And, and you grow in confidence. Same with Robin Reed, Olympic medalist. He, he got thrust in, didn't he, in Italy for WBC, won it. Yeah. And, and then, he, you know, he had about five WBC fights in the space of 14 months. You wouldn't get that nowadays, would you? But the point I want to make is you just go to that next level. Um, I, I just think that boxing's it's not like that now. People are trying to cut them levels out, aren't they, and just jump straight to big prizes. Do you think that's right? But that's a, a great point you've made. And um, something I was trying to explain last time, I think we ran out of time. Yeah. Uh, where, where I've said, um, I've, met, I've met most people in boxing before. So I'm, I'm 30 years old now. I've been around boxing since I was like 21, 22. Once you've met them, I'm at a point in my life, I don't care about meeting people. I don't care about Eddie Hearn. I don't care about, I don't really want to watch your interviews. I'm my own man. I don't need, I, if you say to me, who do you think wins, Joshua or Fury? I can think for myself. I don't need Johnny Nelson's opinion. So what I'm saying, the problem is, the problem with boxing, we're not seeing the fights we want to see happen. And we're not seeing that build. Look, I don't care. What's a good example? Right, if you said to me, um, uh, I don't know, Golovkin, in his spare time, Golovkin likes fishing. Well, I don't really care, do I? Let me just see the fight. I just want to see the fights. And the problem with boxing, they've turned it into a, a clown show where it's about people's interviews and, oh, Shannon called me this. Or, I don't want to hear about people's personal lives. Like, I work full time. I, I haven't got the time. Just put the fight on. So when I come home on a Saturday night, I tell you, this is the sort of card I want to see, but it's not going to happen. Joshua Fury, main event. Uh, Yard versus Boatsy. Uh, who else can I think of? 
Callum Johnson versus Hosea Burton. Uh, who are the best in Britain? You've got Liam Williams. Put Liam Williams in against uh, Chris Eubank Jr. Put Callum Smith. In, see what I'm saying? Just give us the fights. Put Callum yeah. Smith against Billy Joe Saunders. But stop telling me, stop putting interview after interview. Look, I'm a 30 year old man. You think I'm going to sit down and watch someone like Shannon Courtney talk about her life? I've got my own life. I'm not interested. Just put the fights on. And I don't mind women's boxing. I mean, put Katie Taylor in against uh, Chantel Cameron. Put put Cecilia Break. Just put the fight on and I'll watch. But the problem is, as you've said, there's no structure anymore. There's no... You're not building the fighters. You're not... Like, back in the day, like in the 40s and 50s, these guys had 50 or 60 fights before they got a title shot. But these days, you've got Shannon Courtney getting a title shot after one or two fights. Like, give me a break. And some of the women she's beating, but these are not fighters. These are, I mean, these are like they look like pregnant women or dinner ladies. So yeah, let, let's take it back to the old days and let's see the structure. But I, I blame boxing. It's like people like Eddie Hearn and Adam Smith. I'm like, you've turned it into a clown show. I don't care how many followers someone has. So you think someone like Jake Paul? Do you think I care about Jake Paul? No. Unless he wants, unless he wants to fight me, so I get a lot of money. But I'm not interested in what he does in his life. He said, yeah. right, "Go, go look at basketball. Would you see Jake Paul play on the court against Michael Jordan? It's, it's not going to happen. Or you take football. Either you're good enough to get into the Premier League, or you're not. And I just want to see fights. So that's yeah. that's a great that's a great point yeah, you could, make. I'm just going to finish off on this point, uh, and I would ask you if you answer me yes or no. Does Fury Joshua happen this year? No, of course not. Does Usek Joyce happen this year? E- yes. All right. And is that for WBO interim? Oh, it's too many belts. Um, yeah, probably, yeah. All right. And let, let's just finish off on this uh, question here. Answer me yes or no. Is UFC showing boxing how it should be done with the top people fighting each other? Yes. All right, and we'll leave it at that. Okay, thank you for coming on, Michael. We'll have you on in another week or so. Hope oh, man, you're it was all... a pleasure. Mm. Hope you're okay. Yeah, top man, it was a pleasure. All right, then, well, listen, you take care and all the best to you down there in uh, sunny London. It's been an honour. Thank you. Take you. care, Michael. All the best. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. That were Michael uh, from London. He's uh, he's been up here before. He stopped at mine. I think I picked him up from up here, uh, Winker Bank uh, train station. So good luck to him on his journey. He's only a young lad. So, all right, so I hope you enjoyed that. I like to have my regulars on. And he's more than welcome more than welcome to come on. And he wasn't afraid, like other people have been afraid, to speak about the Panorama programme because we're not going to sit here filling our nappies over some bit of hearsay, are we? All right? So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. All right? Shout out to all them uh, people who keep leaving comments as well. All you new people and all your new accounts. Keep leaving them comments. Keep keep making me have a good laugh at night time. All right. Peace out.